episode 108. A lot of emotion in that blank expression. <laughs> yes, the Gunji arc. The most exciting part. Uh-oh. How long can this continue? That would be really interesting. It'd be really interesting if he beats her. Though I don't think he will. Weird to say this about this tyrannical, murderous ant king, but, but the best thing for his growth, I feel, would not just be a Gunji victory. It would be absorbing whatever life lessons are coming at him through his sort of extremist and warped mental framework that are being exposed in his matchup against this girl. Winning would sort of be like, oh, well, I guess I'm the best after all, just like I thought. Unless there's some sort of underlying gem that comes with that, it's sort of unsatisfying. Though that could be very directly the point of what happens. The king is sort of on pause. Like, he's going in a different direction while his plan continues in the original path he started. The path that everyone's fighting against. Gunji X of X Kamugi. <laughs> Okay. That's her wanting her. That's him wanting her at her best. That is the other direction of what I was worried about. Like just trying to get validation for your previously held beliefs. Well, the arm was about him. The rest is about her. There it is. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh, I don't like the look of that. I don't like the way your eyes just moved. The king would destroy you though. But he wouldn't care actually, he would do it for the king. <laughs> Threw my book on the floor as protest. It's interesting, it's like, what does loving someone really mean? What does dedication to someone really mean? It's almost great. It's all almost really beautiful. <laughs> the torment. <laughs> I'm gonna play out my feelings. And dance out my feelings while playing the violin. Alright, one thing you gotta give these guys credit for, one positive trait, though it's used to an extreme for crazy things, they are not playing around. Like, they do not joke with their promises and their, their missions. They will sacrifice for what they believe in. Like, no one knows he had that thought except for him, and he's holding himself to that standard, much like the king holding himself to his own standard, ripping off his arm. Luffy is maximally dedicated to the king's greatness, but it feels a little bit like an older version of greatness before the beginning of this change brought about by Gunji, which is probably why he feels threatened. This is a really tough thing to navigate, if you really care about someone, watching them engage in something that's dangerous or risky, it's not easy to know the line about how much they actually are in danger and need help and how much it's a challenge they need to face and overcome. The optimal thing for a person is not zero danger or zero risk or no bad decisions, right? Being a great person, having a great life, being your best self does not necessarily mean being the most safe, the most happy. That might create an optically beautiful life. But if the goal is something like strength of character, greatness, you actually probably want to expose yourself to non-lethal levels of the thing, much like poison resistance or your immune system's bacterial resistance. The same goes for bad ideas and bad behaviors to an extent. The key word there though is like non-lethal. You don't want a game over event and watching people walk that line is very difficult. <laughs> poofy being poofy. Oh, what a, what a stack team. Feels good to have Kalua back. Damn, imagine being first. Uh, I think you need moral. Maybe they're right. They could be right. I want a plan that doesn't rely on predicting their movements because they're so powerful and so far ahead of you. Moral has shown me that you need to come up with a plan that will go right no matter what unknowns there are. And it needs to be adaptive. It's tense. Tense. Imagine this meeting. Imagine sitting at this meeting knowing what you're about to face. Some of them don't even know. Some of them have never even felt the end directly. Worried about Palm. You might encounter her as hostage, would they take hostages? The fact that we're not seeing this, the fact that we didn't see what happened to her, makes me very, very suspicious. I think she went. I think she went in. Yeah, you gotta prepare for all contingencies, and this is cool of strength. This is, is it, am I wrong? Is this not directly a sign of that exact character growth arc that Kilua went under, underwent? The fact that he's taking a leadership role going against not one of the royal guard that they, they encountered, but three of them and the king. He knows their level is outmatched, and yet. 
甘いよそんな時にこいつはまずパームを最優先に救い出すことを主張するんだよでどうやるかの方法は<笑> oh、no, this read. 心配なのはわかるけど作戦が始まったら終了まですっぱり忘れる<笑>な気持ちが頭よぎるコンマスを。Oh no, oh no, oh no, I'm getting a really bad feeling. Go asking Gon, making a plan that relies on Gon not to get distracted. You are just planning for annihilation. Gon will get distracted. You need A, B, C, D, E, F plans. The waiting, too, the waiting would destroy me. I'd rather just go in there now and fight them and die. Nyaruhodo. Nyaruhodo. <laughs> He seems so gentle. Like he's enjoying his life. And he's let go of some of that rage about not winning. I was about to say, it can wait for Gunji. Page in the Shorisur Kokumino You know what's really odd? This is almost definitely not going to happen. But something that occurred to me, just based on my feeling about the characters, I feel like in real life there's a high chance someone like Poofy, and this is going to sound wild given his dedication to the king, could betray the king. And I say that because his self identity is wrapped up so tightly in the king's identity and his specific image of what the king is. When the king is not, and people are not, what Poofy or anyone thinks people are. People are what they are and they're constantly changing and updating, as difficult as it is to continually process. And if his image is explicitly linked to a very Static image of the king. The king changing is personally threatening, and there's a rage that can form there. I mean, I feel like I've seen this in, in real life. I've seen when people inevitably change over time. Long friendships can be strained, relationships can be strained. It can be perceived emotionally as a threat to see someone else's growth. <laughs> There's like an emotional ask in here somewhere. It's not just about the plan. It's like trying to push the king along to the pre established vision. Maybe you need to, you know, consider a new career. <laughs> Maybe this is it. I mean, time to think ahead. Live for yourselves. Live for knowledge or something. Or whatever it is Yupi does. Scary. Scary. Threatening. He, he tries to convince himself. Mm -hmm. Sure, no worry there. She's just chilling. I don't know. I feel like she's in her own league. Moral has been established so well with those two fights. High respect. <laughs> She's having a great time. She's the only one of them having fun. Imagine this goodbye, too. Next time we see each other. But the real enemy comes from within, just like the king. It and Dougal really just got added to like the greatest, most ambitious plan of all time, last minute. One day, one day, wild, wild, all this set up. I can't get over how great the Gunji choice was in this story, that all this is happening, and this is what the king's doing. Yeah, that's, I felt that. That's Maybe there's a statement in there about freedom. There has been something in here, it's not super explicitly focused on, I don't think, but there's something about like your birth, your programming versus your choice. Like this started off as a bunch of flesh hungry, breeding frenzied ants. And now we have the king questioning the meaning of true freedom. Even if you're winning, if the board is dictating your moves, are you really free? It probably sounds really esoteric and it's so basic in general, it's almost useless, but it's an almost limitless question in pursuit. It has a tendency to be an unknown unknown. It's hard to will yourself into awareness of choices you'd never considered. The awareness that something is a choice at all comes as sort of a spark, maybe at best perpetual practice of identifying things that are choices in like a cascading sequence. And you don't really want true freedom that can be suffocating. You do want some kind of structure. You do want the rules of Gunji, but you want to be able to be making choices on the Gunji board. If you're doing the predictable thing, if there's only one thing you think you could do at any given moment, you're probably still being dictated. There's a very high statement being made here about choice and responsibility and agency that he's developing through this game. You goofed. Oh, I feel happy. Oh? Oh, we're having a magical moment? Is this Nen? Oh, we activated her Gunji Nen. It, it probably is Nen, right? 
Scary, scary, but amazing. How he reacts to this will make a big statement about where he is. If he's excited, that's a good sign. Rare for her to ask that. I need to go play Gunjo against a better opponent. Myself. Oh my god, that's that could be humiliating. Wow, to think he thought he was close. Oh yeah, what's her name? We don't know. I think this is a solidification moment of them becoming friends and peers. Oh, okay, the title card. <laughs> Did we just become f -f 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 friends? <laughs> oh, you don't even know your name. No one bothered to learn his name. For all people's adoration of him, no one, no one knows his name. What do you do? So. Oh no, he barely knows his name. He barely even knows your name. King. Wow. I thought he had a name. Mom never gave him a name? Is that all I am? A king? This is so great. It's so amazing. Honest. Oh, I don't like that answer. No, I don't like that. I don't like that. Slap her with your tail, nameless king. I don't like that. I don't like when I ask for an answer and people say, whatever you, you know, whatever you're feeling. It's like, there's, an, there's a reason I'm asking. And like, I even love it when people give me answers I hate because at least that's like a wall, you know? I'm narrowing down my answer. Some of the best and most constructive conversations I've ever had were on topics on which I fundamentally, absolutely, 100% vehemently disagreed with my interlocutor. But like, it helped me formulate that clearly and also the reasons why. It isn't about how I feel. I, I, what is my name? Who am I? Well, I don't like the sentiment behind what you said because it sounds sort of like ass kissing. There is something true there because I think the question of the name is more of a question of who am I really? Am I just my title? Am I just this role? There's no choice. I'm a static object, a static image, which is sort of how they treat him. Going back to what I was saying about Poofy. Also in various reaction series, I've been alluding to the fact that like high power, high money, things like that create a lot of dangers. I know this is super cliche. It's so real. Like I've, ex I've experienced it recently in such a great depth. This sort of high position is so cool. You can really get what you want from things. You can control people's behavior. It can be really gratifying. Unless you're really careful, no one will see you as a human being anymore. You become an object. You become a very high object, like a Chanel bag. There's a switch that flips in people's heads if they know what you are and what you have, where you are something from which things can be extracted. You are someone to be managed, someone to not offend. The strategy becomes not interaction, depth, communication, but navigation handling, watching the king with his royal guards, I, I'm getting this similar feeling of shallowness. There's no depth of field here for how they see him. He's just king. Everything's going well. I, I think things are great. But Poofy might reject that. He knows her name. Barely knew your name. Oh, what? Oh. <laughs> oh my god, this is so wholesome. <laughs> and so cool. Oh. Or I'll stab you in the back. Oh, that's interesting. Oh, that's interesting. This is dangerous. This is a heated situation. Silently. <laughs> Every video is so interesting. Like, she's enjoying this. Oh, is this- is this your takeaway? I hope this is a little bit self-scathing. Oh, oh, that's disappointing.
okay, okay, I do, uh, I get it in a sense. There is something to this. Force is the way humans' life operates. Force is sort of the last thing, the base of who will win, who will lose. It's sort of wild and terrible to think about, but any conflict will be overturned by force eventually at its ultimate level if things can't be resolved. Social graces, the law, disputes, how you treat people, at least instinctually and biologically, is underpinned by the threat of force. It is the ultimate. We don't really think about it that way because we have the cushion of law. People sort of know that if they do things wrong, there is a punishment coming for them. Could be imprisonment, could be a financial penalty. So there's that insulative buffer. But below law is force, right? Like if you don't obey the law or you fight back against people trying to execute the law, you encounter force. Even things like just social conflict, there's a wiring there. If you're continuously grading for a long enough period, you will be or would have been ancestrally turned on by your tribe and encountered force. And if you're not, it's probably because of that same thing. It's the law stopping people from doing that, which is undermined by force. In fact, thinking about this now, it seems like society has perhaps undergone a system whereby we build as many insulating layers as possible from, from force because of how absolute and dangerous it can be in its destruction. Like how society has been slowly building up through nature, separating us from our natural environment. So too have we been building up this like structure to create the maximal levels of safeguard between us and like just this use of force as a tool. So yes, in a way, if you were the most powerful person force wise, if you could kill anyone, if nobody could kill you, you would be the most powerful person in that way of looking at it. All that sort of goes out the window though, when you step outside of the realm of just like life and death and material things. If the goal is not one's life, but one's principles or contributing to what you feel is, is divine beauty of existence, seeing your role as being the strongest node in a very long chain of a universal value system, regardless of the outcome. If your metric for success or failure is living true to yourself, being absolutely free, knowing what you are, what you stand for, that cannot be crushed by force. That is sort of what the king is encountering with Kamugi. He can't beat her with threats. He can kill her. And in the way we usually think about things and the way almost everyone thinks about things, he would win. But like, we also know on some level that he's lost. What I'm saying is very difficult. It's almost impractical except as an ideal. But like, I think it is real. It's there. It's a real ideal. He will find that there's some things he cannot crush. I still have a little bit of hope. He might, this might not be the final assessment. He, he's in a process still. The relief. The relief. I feel like he was ready to stab him, for real. He is an ideas man. Mm. Way ahead of you, <laughs> Yuffie. At least you got there five minutes earlier. I mean, it feels like this is a circle. We kind of like came back to the starting place. But I mean, sometimes growth is an upward spiral. Do it then. Do it. And do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do whatever you want. Do it. Why is she getting attacked by an eagle? <laughs> of all things. Wow, it got in evaporated. How did you manage that? How did you manage to get attacked by an eagle in a closed room? Aww. Aww. She's so sweet. Not even the king. And all his bloodthirst can... Cry. Cry for her. <laughs> Who's moving your pieces? Aw, oh, she's a little baby. Also, I got talons to the face and it really hurt. <laughs> There's a lot of reasons. A lot to cry about. Okay, this is a huge relief. Let me introduce you to this thing called friendship and love. <laughs> it's nice. You can try it. But I can crush love. That's what makes me so powerful. It's a very interesting mirror, a cool take on something that's very common among villains where they identify the highest thing as being like non-human or wanting to become a god. It's like none of these structures, none of this beauty, none of this billions of years formed structure that I lucked into is above me. <laughs> you know, I will become greater than all of things. And it's like, no, inherently you cannot because you are a part of all things. You are just a, a tiny budding flower on this gigantic, enormous tree. You have the same DNA is the tree. So good luck with that. Villains have this tendency to form their lives in opposition to existence and to humanity because they haven't found a way to handle the pain that comes with it. But the answer to the pain of it, I think, is the beauty of it. Understanding where the pain fits in, why it's sort of a necessary component of the beauty. There's an alchemy to it, you know? Even good things, the best of things have a cost. And costs suck. Costs are painful. But the greatness of it is that the, the end result is something greater than the sum of its parts. Life and existence is not a zero-sum game. Like, it does seem like we literally we have all of this out of nothing. That law of alchemy, you know, for something gained, something must be given, is true in a material 
material sense, but not in this other sense, this like greater, let's call it spiritual, divine, though I don't really love that word, sense of things. The king is so great, he's such a compelling villain because he is all those things, he is that villain, he he is tempted down that path, but the challenge is not coming from the heroes. The goodness is not coming from the heroes, it's coming from his own internal conscience and spirit. He's good enough, like he's smart enough, he's there, where like he can feel it and he can't deny it. It's crept into his soul. He has the same radar, I think, I would imagine everyone has some capacity, which is why we could all tap into these shows and feel roughly the same things. And he also has identified it as a pathway to something greater that we can't quite articulate that. And being who he is, I don't think he'll, he'll be able to turn away from it. It was a great and terrifying fake out to have him be like, power is everything I will destroy. But yeah, that didn't last long. Still in danger, I feel, from Goofy, maybe his greatest threat.